Are you struggling with pain on the outside of your leg below your knee? Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'll explain what causes it and how you can get rid of it. So let's get started. And before we can jump into the solutions, you first have to understand the cause, because there are several different things that can cause pain on the outside of the leg below the knee, and it depends somewhat on what you mean by outside of the leg below the knee. If you mean a localized pain on the outside of the leg just below the knee, that's one problem. You mean more of a nervy type pain that radiates down the outside of the leg and possibly into your foot, that's a second problem. And then if you mean more of a muscular pain kind of on the front of your shin, that's a third problem. So let's start with the first problem. If you have a localized pain just below the knee, it's most likely due to either an IT band problem, and your IT band is a long tendon that runs down from your hip to your knee. And it actually goes just a little past your knee and attaches right in the front side of your shin. That's a very common cause of localized pain on the outside of the knee, but often it's just a little bit below the knee where that IT pan attaches into what's known as Gertie's tubercle. The fibular head is part of the proximal tibiofibular joint, which means the joint between the two bones of the leg. Now you have a nerve that runs right behind that joint, and that can actually cause the second problem that we'll talk about in a moment of the radiating nerve type pain down the outside of the leg and into the foot. So what do you do if you have more of a localized problem on the outside of the knee? Well, that often comes from overpronation or twisting your leg inward too much when walking or running. So pronation basically means flattening of your foot and turning inwards of your leg like that. Now, when you pronate, your hip internally rotates like this, and relative to your femur, your tibia externally rotates like that. That can create kind of an offset at your knee joint and actually create a little bit of a joint dysfunction between your tibia and femur as well. But that can also cause your IT band to rub over the outside of your knee or it can cause uh, dysfunction at your tibiofibular joint as well. So one way that you can undo that pronation is if you're going this way too much is to do just the opposite of that. So cross the sore leg over the other one. You want your ankle across the knee like a figure four. And then take this hand and put it just on your shin so your fingers are on the outside of the knee. Now you're going to pull with this lower hand while pushing with this upper hand. So you're creating kind of a shearing force across the knee where this one's pulling inwards, that one's pushing outwards. That creates a translation of your tibia inwards. It also creates a little bit of a rotation of your tibia inwards. So it's basically just the opposite of the problem that caused it. Now that can often relieve pain on the outside of the knee rather quickly, but you still wanna fix the thing that caused it in the first place. So if the problem was overpronation when walking and running, you wanna to try to avoid that type of movement. That may come from hitting slightly more on the outer side of your foot. It may involve activating your glute muscles or butt muscles a little bit more. So thinking about squeezing your glutes and turning your knee outwards. It may involve doming your arch like this, lifting the inside of your arch up. Now, all of those things really go together, and it's almost impossible to think about all of those things at the same time. But usually, one of the cues will work best for you. Some people do better thinking about lifting their arch, some people do better thinking about turning the knee out. Other people do better thinking about squeezing and activating their glutes. In reality, when you do one, you typically do all of them together. So find the mental cue that works best for you and then use that when you're walking. Now, the second thing that can cause a localized pain on the outside of your leg, just below the knee, is a joint dysfunction between your fibula, the small bone of your lower leg, and your tibia, the large bone of your lower leg. 
That joint has a gliding type of motion, and it's not a joint that you have muscles that move. It's more of an accessory joint. But when that joint is stuck or stiff, it can create some localized pain and may give you difficulty bending your knee all the way. Now, a good way to help self-treat a joint dysfunction at that tibiofibular joint is to take a towel and roll it up in kind of a log like this. Then you'll put the towel just behind your knee and then pull your knee into as much bending or flexion as you can. This uses the towel to mobilize the fibula forwards while you pull your tibia backwards. And so this is just a little self-mobilization of that proximal tibiofibular joint. Now I mentioned before that there was a nerve that runs right behind that proximal tibiofibular joint, and that's called the common peroneal nerve or otherwise known as the common fibular nerve. That common fibular nerve then splits into two branches, one that runs deep down your lower leg, and then one that runs on the outside of the lower leg and into the top of the foot. And that's the second problem that I mentioned earlier, that radiating nerve type of pain in the outside of the leg. Now that can come from a proximal tibiofibular joint. And if that's the problem, the technique that we just went through is a really good treatment for it. But another really common thing that can cause pain in that outer lower leg is a lower back problem, particularly the L5 nerve root or the S1 nerve root or a combination of both of them. The L5 nerve root refers pain down into the front outside of your leg and the S1 nerve root into the back outside of the leg. So if you have a nerve type pain or numbness and tingling in the outside of your leg or in the top of your foot, it is a good idea to rule out a lower back problem. Now, what do you do if you have a lower back problem? Well, that is a loaded question that is way beyond the scope of this video. But for most older people over the age of 50 or so, the problem is going to probably be more of a stenosis type problem, particularly if it happens more when you're standing and walking and it feels better when you're sitting down. And if that's the case, just opening up the spaces in that L5 S1 joint by bending forwards like this is really helpful. When you bend forwards like this, that opens up the spaces where the nerve roots leave your spine and it can take some pressure off of the nerve root. So if you do notice you're having pain while standing and walking, find somewhere to sit down or even bending down while standing like that and take some pressure off of the nerve root. Additionally, if it's just on one side, leaning away from that side is often helpful as well. And if you can combine leaning away along with a little bit of slight flexion of your spine, that often feels really good. So one way you can do that is to sit in a chair, reach one arm up in the air, and then lean away from the sore side. So you're going a little bit into flexion by coming forwards, and then a little bit into side bending away from the sore side. And then just hold that stretch for about 30 seconds or so. So that's the second problem, the nerve pain down the outside of the leg. Now the third problem is a muscle problem, a muscle known as your tibialis anterior, which is on the front outside of your shin. The function of the tibialis anterior muscle is to pull your foot up like this so you don't drag your toes when you're walking, or also to help keep your foot from slapping down when your foot hits the floor. Now, if you're getting sort of a shin splint on this outside part of your shin, that's often due to the tibialis anterior working harder than it should. And often a reason for that is heel striking too much when you're walking or when you're running. If you hit like this and you're landing with a lot of force on your foot, that's a lot of effort that your tibialis anterior has to use to control the slapping down of your foot. So when you're walking, if you can hit more with a flat foot, and particularly when you're running, if you can hit more with a midfoot strike than a heel strike, that'll control how much slapping your tibialis anterior has to control.
So to review, the three problems that we discussed in this video are localized pain on the outside of the leg, just below the knee, and that can come from an IT band problem or a joint dysfunction between the tibia and femur or tibia and fibula. The second problem is a nerve dysfunction, either the superficial branch of your perineal nerve or fibular nerve or a lower back problem. And the third problem is a muscular problem with your tibialis anterior working too hard. Now, if you need some more tips to help improve your walking to relieve that muscle pain, check out this video up here. Or if you have a lower back problem that's causing more of a referred nerve pain in your lower leg, check out this back pain and sciatica playlist down here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos.